Hey everyone, back again here. I'm going to actually continue on the statements for uh, my sequel. Uh, where we left off was showing you a little bit of select and how to use update. I'm going to actually show you a little bit more on that here in this uh, continuing on. Currently on my display or on my screen, I have actually the select statement that we kind of used and broke down and changed around from the last one on basic 16 and then the update statement. Uh, I'm going to try to expand a little bit more on those and then if I have time, I'm going to switch over to create and insert for you. So, starting off, we have our select. So, the last time I went over is how to call a specific column or call all the columns. And then I showed you how to update. To be honest, I covered most of the, what you needed there, but I didn't show you how to left join, which is actually calling another table and then pulling it over. Or, yeah, another table and pulling it over out of the same schema. So, uh, what I'm going to do is uh, just remove this update statement because I don't need that there. So, right now, we're currently selecting from categories. So let me select categories here. Currently categories have an ID class name and description. Now, what do we use categories for? So let's go and see what data we have. We have house, uh, art, market, staff lounge. Okay. So let's find a reference to that. In this case, I'm not for sure since I haven't actually been in this database in a long time. So what I'm gonna do is actually create a whole new string for select. So we're gonna actually find a uh, form. We have our forms here. And then from our forms, we're going to, excuse me on that, forms, we're going to find our topics. Oop. All right, so we have no topics. I'm pulling from an old database. I am failing miserably at this because I found forms and I can't find form topics because I have none probably. Great. I guess that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so going off of what we had the last time, I'm going to close out of this tab and then go to categories. So currently we're pulling from categories. So what I'm going to show you is how to left join a form onto the category because you have a specific ID for that category. So currently if I reset the statement, and I'm just going to go to categories here and click select. I select all, quick and easy. So I'm going to close that tab and I'm going to pull forms over. Now in categories, we have ID, class, name, description, staff. It's only staff only. So what I'm going to scroll down here is find form and just select that. The reason why I'm just selecting is because over here in the left uh, information for that table, I get all my column names to make this join together. So what we're going to do is we're going to select all. We want all from both databases. And then from what I selected, I'm going to actually define a variable and say A. In this case, it's category, so that's defined as C. So C as in category, left join. Okay, from a left join, what it's doing is attaching on whatever data it can. If there's no data found, then it'll make a blank data off of it. Um, if data is found, then it'll pull it over and attach it for you. Uh, it's going to be extra, so it doesn't actually override everything. Um, so we're going to go off our ID. So what I did is I just defined what table I wanted. And that was categories, and I defined it as a variable C in my, in my statement. So I'm going to go left join. And I needed to find the database, so I need to go for I need to go yarn hugger dot forms ah, and then actually I need to find so it's form, so I'm going to go f, and we're going to go on. So what the on statement does is say I want to left join this table onto this table, but by doing that you need to actually define where it's going to uh, connect that. So I need to find a variable that they two can reference or one reference back to the other to combine them. So I'm going to go left join forms. Now I have IDs over here for my category. So I want C for category dot ID is equal to. And now if we look at a form data, we have our form ID, parent ID, paladin, and we're going to make that our parent ID. Uh, in this case, categories doesn't link to anything. It's an old database that I don't have any reference to. But I can make a reference here stating that my parent ID is going to be the reference to whatever category it's going to fall under. And by doing that, I can pull over data. So we can go parent 
ID. Oops, my bad. That's an underline, and that's supposed to be F dot parent ID. So what this is gonna do is combine the rows. So if I go like this, boop, it pulls over data. Now, as you can see, there's duplicate data in here. That is because I'm pulling from the main database categories. Uh, and I don't have categories, just blank open. And left joining uh, all the form data. Well, there's multiple forms that reference to the parent ID. So in this case, we get multiple. So as you notice here, uh, for the ID of two, which is the category Chrysandria, I probably said that totally wrong, you have news, feedback, bugs, question and answers in Chrysandria. And then for the house as a category, you have intros, general, hangouts, games, life, cafe. So as you can see, it, it makes a reference to joining table. Now you can minimize what it gives you back on these tables by going like this. Uh, I want all of C, okay. And for F, I just want the short name. Short name, oops, short name. So when I do this, boom. So what it does is it has the primary categories and then the short name just gets attached from the other table. And there's right join, left join, there's normal join. You can join multiple databases or multiple tables together following the same method. Uh, if you want to narrow it down, you can go uh, where, let's say our category ID is equal to three. So only pull me back category of three and then all the data from it. So boop. as you see, I get house, 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 house. So you can actually do a join of a table, join of a table. Oh, sorry, that's kind of off. You can do select of a table, then join another table to it, and then do a where statement where it actually gives you back all your data. Continuing on from that, you can actually set a limit too. Doo -doo. Say, as you see, I get back six results. I want that to only give me three. I can go limit, boom, three. And then I can actually other add other where statements. I uh, haven't done this yet for you guys. And you can break it down even more. So let's first off pull back all the data that we have at the moment. And we're just gonna change this to a star real quick. Okay, so we have our parent ID, which is our reference to our category. And then we have our user post, we have our staff, we have our intros. Trying to think if there's anything else. Okay, that's what we can do. So let's revert this back to what I had. Boom, F short name. Okay, we can go and on the where statements, you always use and between each one of the selections that you're doing, or you use an or. Um, or is either one, long as one of them match, or one of them is better than do it. In this case, I'm not worried about that. I want to and I want to make sure something is doing something. And both have to be matched. So we're gonna go F dot form ID is greater than five. So from doing this, I should only get two results now. Boop. I got three because I set five. My bad. Boop. Oh. I'm going to keep on getting more because what I, what I didn't take into account is that I have a limit of three. So it was actually stopping at the first three, which my, my IDs must be higher than that. So let's go 10. There we go. Now I got two. Uh, since I'm not showing the IDs, I don't know what they are. So I can actually change that. So I have F short name. Let's go F dot form underline ID comma. Since I'm not pulling all from the, the table that I'm joining, I'm just trying to get the form, form ID. So 31, 32. Okay. So if I go down to five, it's currently pulling me a form ID of eight, 10, and 31. So it's only grab the max. And you can change the order of this. Uh, I'm actually just gonna copy that statement. I wanna make sure I keep that uh, stored here because I'd like to set that onto a file for you guys and you can look at it on the server. So next one, I'm just gonna copy this here. Okay, so what I'm saying, I wanna change the sort. So I have the where and I have the limit. I need to set an order by. Order by goes before, uh, before the limit and after the where if you have a where statement. Uh, order by, and we're gonna go, what do we wanna go by? For uh, F dot form ID descending. So descending means it's going smaller in number. Boop. See, and then if I wanted to go in reverse, I can go ascending. Boop. So as you can see, I, I just flipped basically the form ID in this case. Um, that's how you do an order by. Now, I showed you how to left join. I showed you how to order by. What happens if I want to insert into my categories? Uh, I'm going to actually open up a new statement here. What happens if I want to insert data? Uh, 
depending on what formula you want to use, you can insert. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to have the select run. And I move that down here. The reason why the select is there is because I'm going to run the insert, and you're going to see it up here. Currently, you see up to an ID of 7. Now, one of the things that you see here is ID. I don't actually have to primary set the ID, mainly because of this right here. AI, uh, that means auto increment, and it's a primary key, so it should be unique in general. It's not required to be unique, but it's a primary key, and that's the, how the database organizes uh, the whole database by. So it should auto increment, so it should automatically set me 8. Uh, if it's at 8. I don't know if uh, some have been deleted. So if some IDs have been deleted, it will keep on incrementing not off of what the last, it will go off of what the last ID was that inserted. So say if you insert a 10 and then you delete a 10, when I insert again, it will give me 11. So we're going to insert. So I'm going to go insert, which is my action, uh, insert in 2. And now I need to define what database, uh, what schema and database. So yarn hugger dot category. Okay, insert into and what do I want to insert? Now I can find all the I can define all the columns and then set the values to it, which is probably the better method to go in case you change the database because then you have to adapt to fill in that data if it's required data. Uh, if it's doing that, then you should probably be keeping documentation of what needs to be required and what's not. So we're gonna go right here. All right, uh, what columns do I want to set? I want to set in class. Uh, doo -doo. There we go. Class. Uh, let's see here. We have a name. And let's go staff. I don't care about the description. I'm not worried about it. I don't want to put it in. Now, I need to set in the data for that. So I'm going to go values. There we go. Now, what values do I want to set in? So I'm going to set in quotes. The uh, reason why I did the uh, semicolon, uh, before, not semicolon, but uh, asterisk, uh, on those ones because I want to kind of just mark them out as the columns. It's uh, just a syntax thing in case uh, people try to break your code. You have a syntax right and you uh, purge all your data correctly. Um, it makes it a lot simpler and it's harder to break into uh, like SQL injection and all that info stuff. But uh, it's just a concept I've learned. Uh, I just do over time. Um, so we're going to go class. What class do we want to do this? PHP. That's what class we're taking right now. Or we're learning. It's more of my SQL at the moment. Uh, we want to set a name. Uh, PHP my SQL. And then finally, we want to set if it's for staff or not. In this case, I don't actually have to have that. I can go one or I can go zero. But I want to just make sure it's in the quotes. It doesn't matter at all. I'm actually switch it over to what it needs to be, especially if it's an integer. Um, we're not done making it for staff because it's supposed to be for the public. So if I currently right now, I have seven. I can't even do that with my fingers here. I have seven IDs. So I'm done run this insert, and then I'm done see what it pulls up from the slide. So boop, boom. Okay, so I have an error. Doesn't have a default value. See, this is what the error that you're gonna get, and I don't think I can uh, copy response, I believe. There we go. So that's a, a comment here. Boop. So this is what runs into. Uh, I want to actually cause this for you. Uh, main reason why is if it does not have a default value, and I didn't tell you this earlier, if it does not have a default value, you're going to get an error. It's the same thing as requiring unique. Um, that's why usually you'll set a default value if it's not required or it needs to be updated. You might say, oh, default value is blank. Um, it's up to how you're defining your database or you set it where it has a false value in it somehow, a zero or false in general. Uh, so in this case, it's forced me to have description. Description. Come on. So now I need to set a description in here. Why do you require details? So I'm going to set, comma. So, and I don't know why I click save there. And let's run it one more time. Boop. This time I didn't get an error at the bottom and I got PHP 8. Now I can click refer do this again. Doop. Now I got 9. Now I got 10. Now I got 11. Now I got 12. What's happening is I'm running this query over and over again. And so I'll keep on inserting. Since I'm not defining the ID, I don't have to worry about duplicates in that case. But the duplicates are going to be in class name and description. You can do that by setting a unique value. And I'm going to go over creating a table and what information you can set in there, how you can change it, and other things. But I wanted to show you that. And like I said earlier, if I delete number 10 here, delete, and that's delete number 11, delete, and let me click apply. 
Boop. Boop. Okay. So I just deleted those two. So now I should only have seven, eight. Uh, I deleted five. My bad. Yeah, seven, eight, nine, eleven. I deleted ten. Ten and twelve. I can't remember my numbers. <laughs> so run this again. Boop. And went to thirteen. So with the auto uh, auto increment and primary key. Uh, primary key is not really the thing that you need to worry about. It's because it's an auto increment that it's going to keep on incrementing from the last one. In this case, the last one was 12, so it added 1 and made it 13. And that's how you do a basic insert. Um, I will be going over the create and delete uh, functions. As you saw, I just deleted real quickly. And actually, it pops up the SQL query. Now, I'm going to show you how to break that down, and I'm going to show you how to break down the create query in the next tutorial. I uh, hope this is uh, helpful. If you think not or if I, you think I missed something or you don't quite understand something, leave me a message. Hope you enjoyed. <laughs> see, I hope to see the comments or anything else that might be an issue or you guys like. And hope to see you next time. Bye. Hey, thanks for watching. Um, if you like the video, please leave a comment or uh, like below. Um, if you want to keep up with all activities on the channel, click subscribe. And if you would like to watch another video, there's some videos listed down below here. And thanks for watching.